Hello students, let us continue our uh, discussion on software engineering. In the previous session, we have uh, talked about different ways of writing a re system requirement specification, wherein we have discussed the users of a requirements document, wherein who is going to read this requirements document. It could be system customers, it could be managers, it could be system engineers, it could be system test engineers, it could be system maintenance engineers. Why all these users read a requirements document is, uh, is also discussed in the previous session. And we also talked a little bit about what should be the structure of a requirements document. This is not a, a well uh, 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 strict forbidden structure, but it is a it is a kind of structure that is standardized by some standard organizations, wherein they say that this is this is preferably the structure that is to be followed for every requirements document specification. The requirements document specification consisted of the preface, the introduction, the glossary, the user de requirements definition, the system architecture and what is the purpose of all these things being in the requirements specification document is also discussed. Among the other things, we also talked about the system uh, document consisting of system models, the system evolution and a little bit of appendices and the index that will help whoever is reading the system requirement specification document, uh, it, it is going to give them a guide to what is there in the document. Fine. Let us continue our discussion with the how to write a system requirement specification. For that, we, need, we may make use of natural language, structured natural language, design descri description language, graphical notations or mathematical specifications, which we have already discussed in the previous session in detail. Now, we will now go ahead with the requirements engineering process. Now, what is this requirements engineering process? In order to develop a certain software, we follow a software engineering process. This process model consists of the process activities at different stages of the software development. Similarly, one of that process activity is the requirements analysis process. Now, the requirements analysis process itself is an engineering process by itself. So, what are the various different activities that are present as a part of this requirements engineering process? So, this requirements engineering process that is used in developing a software requirements engineering specification, it depends uh, on the application domain on which the software is being developed and who are the people who are involved in the organization and who are the people who are going to use this uh, software application. It is dependent on all these three things. Now, what are the processes that are involved in sys uh, requirements engineering process for a certain system development? Now, the first and the foremost process that we are going to discuss is the feasibility study. After the feasibility study, we are going to talk about requirements elicitation, we are going to talk about requirements analysis, requirements validation and requirements management. So, but in practice requirements engineering is not a step by step uh, process of following these activities just one after another. It is much more about an iterative process that we are going to follow in order to develop a requirement specification document. So, it is just like how, how we have an iterative process for our software development process, our requirements engineering process is also an iterative process. It is it, your and these process activities you will like just like your uh, software development activities can be interleaved. So, you can have one process activity in between another process activity, you can do the same activity twice, you can iterate back to the previous activity that you have already covered. So, this way they are interleaved with one another. How they are interleaved is depicted by this spiral view of the requirements engineering process that you can see here. This spiral, if you uh, as soon as you see it, you can relate it to your Bohm spiral model for software development. Yes, something this is something very similar to Bohm spiral model for uh, software development, but this spiral model is defined for the requirements engineering process. 
uh, as we have discussed it starts with the start activity here every spiral defines a particular phase of the requirements engineering process you start with the start activity and you go clockwise and cover up the uh, cover up every process in each phase every process in each phase and this is what we call as interleaving here it is divided into four three sectors unlike the four sectors in the bohem spiral model here we divide the spiral model into three sectors here beginning with the requirements elicitation requirements specification requirements validation and the output uh, of this spiral model is your system requirements dot uh, document that you can see at the uh, in the um, uh, output of the spiral at the end of the spiral activity so when we start off with the requirements engineering process first a business requirement specification is given and at every step a feasibility study has to be done so a feasibility study is done user requirements elicitation and the user requirement specification is finalized to release a certain kind of a prototype in order to validate these requirements then system requirements elicitation is a repeated activity based on the prototyping uh, elicitation is a, a repeated activity and uh, specification and modeling comes as the next stage after which you review the requirement and the finally we get the system requirements document okay because we have divided something like this this spiral into three different sectors it is important for us to know what happens under each of these sectors what are the activities that are going on and how do they contribute to the requirements engineering document okay this is what we are going to uh, uh, learn in the rest of the session today the first thing that we are going to do for a requirements engineering specification or as requirements engineering process is the feasibility study now what is feasibility study feasibility study is your this is where you are going to decide whether the system can be developed or not yes or no based on the requirements that is given to us by the customer or the end user okay so now this is the stage which decides whether the pro proposed system is actually worthwhile attempting after the feasibility study itself you are going to the next stage of the requirements engineering process you are not going to the next stage in software development activity you are going to the next stage in requirements engineering process only if it if the feasibility study says that yes you can go ahead with it okay now what is this study focused on what are we going to do as a part of this feasible study feasibility study feasibility study we are going to check if the system contributes to the organizational objectives there are a set of objectives that are required to be matched in order to develop a certain uh, software so is it matching the organizational objective that is what we are going to check first then if the system can be engineered using the current technology and is it within the budget when a certain budget is fixed for the development of a certain process it is at this feasibility study the requirements engineering stage wherein you decide whether it is going to cross the budget what type of technology are you going to use in order to satisfy a certain requirement is also done at the feasibility study stage if the system can be integrated with other systems that are being used if this is just a certain component or a integration of software development that we are doing which wherein in an environment there already exists uh, exists a number of systems that are already in place and working people are using it and you are de developing a certain software that has to fit into that domain that environment then you have to think if these requirements are given to me and if i develop a software system is it going to fit into the already existing develop, being used software that is what we are going to uh, think about at this stage if the system can fit into the cultural framework of the organization and whether it is acceptable to all the stakeholders of the system okay we'll talk more about the stakeholders in the next slides so 
as a part of this feasibility study, like how we have actually asked questions to the stakeholders or to the customers, to the clients, the end users in order to determine what a system should do. For feasibility study also, you can determine and collect information about the, cert about the system requirement by asking a few questions. Now, what are these questions? A typical kind of questions for a system could be, what if the system was not implemented? Generally, what happens is that when there is a repeated manual process that is that you are going to keep repeating for conducting a certain activity every now and then it is best to be automated okay you you try to automate it and you try to develop ask somebody to develop a software for you to automate the repetitive process okay now what if the system wasn't implemented what could be the pro problem that the end user is going to face with manual kind of a working uh, in the environment that is what you are going that that answer is going to uh, answer this question what if the system wasn't implemented what are the current process problems if they are using a process right now it could be manual process or some other software that is doing the job for the person then what is the problem with that process you need to answer this question because this question, this answer is very important for us to develop the software because it could give rise to the requirement that is required for the software. It could be a priority requirement, but to in order to solve a certain existing problem, we are trying to develop a software or automate a certain process that could be a strong requirement for this software. And that is where you have to analyze if the requirements can be satisfied so that I can go ahead with the software development. How will the proposed system help? If at all I am going to develop this system and I put it in its place where it has to be uh, uh, working in and I ask the end users to work with it, is it going to help the end user? Is it going to help automating the process for example? Right? So, that question needs to be answered. What will be the integration problems? I am integrating this software with the existing system, definitely there will be integration problems. Right? So, can they be solved? If the integration problems are very high and you really think that yeah, okay, I can develop this software, but integrating it in the current working environment is very difficult, then it would be it would be very difficult for you to take a chance to uh, satisfy the requirement of the software development system. Is a new technology needed? What skills are required in, in order to use this technology? If at all a certain technology is already being used and for the satisfaction of the requirement specified by your client, a new technology needs to be implemented. Are there sufficient skills that are going to uh, uh, that are that are going to help us implement this technology or are there sufficient skills at the user end who can use this technology and work with the software that also is a important question what facilities must be supported by the proposed system now this is basically the facilities that is supported in in a sense now i build a software it's not just about going and installing the software on a system at the user end there could be domain requirements there could be already there could already be uh, as we talked about it the systems that are existing if I want to integrate this, what are the other facilities that I need to provide to keep this software that I have developed going? If these facilities itself will create a problem in our end, then it would be very difficult for us to um, uh, implement this requirement. So, thus this feasibility study basically tells us if the system has to be developed, is whether it is possible to implement the system within the organizational constraints or the budget constraints that is that has been specified and within the time constraint that has been specified. This is the feasibility study part of it. The next kind of a process is requirement el elicitation. What is elicitation you must all be thinking? Elicitation means discovery that is all. Discovering the requirements for a certain software is the requirements elicitation process and this is where you are going to determine what the system should do 
okay the feasibility study just uh, talked about whether it can be done and here when you decide yes so something can be done what should be done is determined in the requirements elicitation process now how do you carry out the requirements elicitation process requirements elicitation process it involves interacting with whoever is going to work with this software it could be interacting with customers who work on the application domain you then you determine what are the services that is that is expe expected out of the software that is needed to be developed what are the systems operational constraints the constraints on which the system can operate the exceptions that it can handle etc then this requirement elicitation process it's not that a software developer or a requirements engineer is just going to sit there and write down the requirements no requirements as said by the client so it is going to involve different people different people who are associated with the software that is being developed it could be end users it could be managers it could be maintenance engineers it could be domain experts it could be unions if any involved in that etc now these stakeholders are people who are directly or indirectly connected to the software that we are developing okay so the end users for example is are the people who are going to use the system finally okay that is the end user managers it could be uh, the person who is managing the team activity the team activity who is going to use this uh, use this uh, software for management purpose or it could be a manager from the software development side your manager also can give inputs to the requirements for a certain system on understanding what the system should do right then it could be engineers who are involved in maintenance we have to concentrate on this because after you develop a software and put it in its place it is the maintenance engineers who are going to answer the next possible questions that arise from the customer end for the next few uh, few months or few years whatever you promise as a part of the contract so these maintenance engineers should also be involved as stakeholders in the requirements elicitation process based on their experience based on the experience of having maintained different softwares in different environment they also can contribute by giving the input to requirements specification okay domain experts somebody who has worked over this domain for uh, for uh, say past 5 years 10 years he could be an expert in this domain you can involve them in order to understand more about the system the working of the system the feasibility of the requirements right you can uh, involve the domain experts uh, then if you are uh, developing a, so a very custom specific software for a certain category say for a student uh, student information system where you want to involve parents then you can have now uh, students union as a part of it or you can have uh, some students and parents who are stakeholders who can involve in your requirements in its elicitation process next and next and the most important thing in requirements elicitation is that the domain requirements are also re are also discovered at this stage the domain requirements we in the previous session we talked about the categories of requirements which is functional requirement non functional requirement and domain requirement functional and non functional requirement we saw it in detail but it is at this stage that we are going to see what is domain requirement domain requirements are derived from the application domain it is need, need not be a specific requirement that is stated by the customer or the client who wants the software it could be derived from the application domain in which the software is being executed okay so this domain requirement the speciality about this is that there are certain terminologies that are very specific to this domain environment and these specialized domain terminology or concepts are used as a part of domain requirements okay the, then the domain requirements actually they talk about the system 
characteristics and features that reflect the domain of operation of the software that is being developed. This domain requirements, it need not be just about the platform, just about the hardware requirement, just about the software requirement. It, it need not be just about the other people who are involved. It could not be just that. It could also give rise to new functional requirements. Based on the domain requirements, new functional requirements could arise. Something that, something that the customer himself would not have thought about or the end user would not have stated. Something you, uh, that as a developer, you would not have thought about it. When you were trying to uh, jot down the domain requirements, a new functional requirement has come up. Okay. So, that can be included as a part of your functional requirement in the function, uh, requirement specification document. Constraints on the existing, existing requirements. There are a set of requirements that needs to be satisfied for a certain software. Now, the domain requirement will define constraints. If this requirement has to be satisfied, what are the constraints? If a function has to be executed 10 times, is there a constraint on the memory and the CPU cycle usage? That could be the domain requirement or constraint on the existing requirement. Okay. Define specific computation. In the domain, you would have to compute because if you try to integrate your ex uh, your software into already existing system, certain computations need to be done based on the existing systems. So, you might need to add certain computations as a part of your software requirement and that could add as a domain requirement in, in your software requirement specification. Now, it, it is very, very important for you to remember that if the domain requirements are not satisfied, if we concentrate only on the functional and non-functional requirement, then the system at the domain end, at the operational end may not work at all. So, it is equally important for us to concentrate on the domain requirement. So, that is about the domain requirement. We are talking about the requirements elicitation and analysis process. So, we talked about requirements discovery, which, which, which we called as requirements elicitation. right? So, the process can be a cycle like this. Every process can be uh, uh, depicted like a cycle. The requirements discovery goes first. After it is done, requirements classification and organization, requirements prioritization and negotiation and finally, you arrive at the requirement specification. It does not end here. During the requirement specification, if a developer or somebody else tend to discover new requirements for the software, again you go through these activities one by one. Okay. Now, what are these activities actually talking about? We talk about requirements discovery, right? requirements discovery and elicitation, discovery and elicitation are the two terms which you can uh, interchange and use them. Requirements elicitation, how can you do it? What are the ways of discovering a certain requirement from a certain customer? The requirements engineering team does what is called as interviewing. Okay. They can do something called as interviewing to whom? To the stakeholders of the system. Who are the stakeholders who are directly or indirectly involved in the system, you, you, who are going to use the system. Okay. So, the stakeholders of the system and they get to know about the system that is to be developed. Now, what kind of interviewing can happen? It could be a closed interview or it could be a open interview. A closed interview or open interview, you would have already heard of it. Like if you have attended, if you have attended any kind of a formal interview, you would have known what a closed interview is wherein you have, there are a specific set of questions that needs to be answered for a system that is to be developed. Okay. So, this closed interview has a predefined set of questions that needs to be answered. An open interview, there is no predefined agenda. Based on your knowledge, the interview, the in, based on your knowledge about the system or based on what you uh, elicitate or based on what you state 
about the requirement, a specific requirement of a system, questions can arise in the minds of the requirements engineer and he can start interviewing based on the concept that you have told. Okay. This is something like when you attend interview in a closed interview uh, to test on a specific domain, the interviewer knows that he wants you, he wants to hire you for a specific domain, then he knows the set of basic questions to be asked. So, a closed interview can be conducted. An open interview is like when an interviewer asks what is your subject of interest and he goes about it based on your subject of interest, based on your concept of interest, something like that. So, the open interview happens. Generally, in the requirements elicitation process, it is a mix of both closed and open interview. Only one kind of interview, it is very difficult to, uh, very difficult to get all the requirements that are required. Right? Do, it is very difficult to freeze the requirement specification based on just one kind of an interview. Right? So, it could be a mix of closed and open ended interviewing and this kind of interviewing, it really helps when, uh, really helps the requirements in the engineer to understand how much the stakeholder knows about what he wants okay? and how he interacts with the system. Right? So, this way interviews are very good for requirements elicitation process. Okay? Now, though it is good for finding out what he wants from the system, what he is expecting from you as a software developer, what he wants the system to behave as when it is put in place, it definitely does not tell us about the domain requirements. It definitely does not talk about the domain requirements. Another type of elicitation process is observation and study, wherein the domain requirements can be understood. This process helps us in understanding the domain in which the software is going to work in. So, the requirements engineering team does what is called as observation and study. This is a very interesting concept, wherein the requirements engineering team will give a set of people to be actually deputed to the place where the software needs to be deployed. So, the process that needs to be automated or the software that is needed to be developed for a certain kind of um, activity, those people, the team is going to interact directly in the environment with the people who are going to use it. So, this way he also, uh, the team also gets to know the working environment of the people, the working environment of the people there, what are they currently using, what is the manual process that they are using currently, what is the domain environment in which the system is going to be placed that is proposed to be built. Okay. This, this is very, very good for process oriented systems. Suppose I want to automate the process of giving a student progress report, right? progress report generation after every uh, continuous internal evaluation or internal assessment that you all write, if I have to give a progress report to the parent, if I want to automate that process, which is manual right now, it is very good for the engineer to come and sit with the teachers, with the uh, team who is going to take in the marks, generate the report, see how they are working and generate see how they can automate this repetitive process. This is a repetitive process. You are going to do this after every CIE, after uh, CIE 1, CIE 2, CIE 3, you are going to do this after a CE also, maybe to send a final marks, final CIE marks to the parents, right? So, instead of uh, each time the teacher asking every uh, coordinator to come and enter the marks, that uh, the actually the, what they can do is to auto use a software, sit wherever they are, and enter the marks, automate the process with the click of a button, they can send the report, progress report, something like that. So, the requirement engineering teams, team and the, in this case can observe the manual process, what is going on okay, in, uh, in action, in situ, in a sense, in the position we say, in situ means, in the position and he is going to conclude on the required information, required information that is required for the development of the software. And this is very good for process oriented systems and there is uh, and this can be achieved through minimal disturbance to the user staff okay? and he should also be very well experienced with the domain. In order to come up with domain requirement, he should be well versed with the domain that is obvious. right? So, 
the analyst must be well experienced with the domain. Then additional information can also be gathered when you are in the place, in the working environment of where the software is to be deployed. You can actually ask, you interact with people at different levels. You can also, re, act, also actually gather requirements from the existing documents there. If people are using lab ma manuals, right? If people are using uh, a kind of uh, rule book, right? Like how I told you about the CIE process, how you automate the, if you have to automate the process, they, the CIE could also involve a quiz, it could involve a test, it could involve an assignment, etc. The rule book tells you all, what are the rules, right? for what is the final marks for a certain course, right. So, they need to read the rule books. So, uh, when you are in the environment, it is very easy to get access to all these things. Who, who are, uh, for, for the people who are going to work with this system, whatever they are using, they can share it with the requirements engineering team in order for them to understand what are the domain requirements of the system. Okay, need not be domain, it could be the functional requirements or the non-functional requirements. Any kind of a requirements can come up through observation and study, but what I am telling is that it is very good for understanding the domain requirement. So, analyst must be well experienced in the domain, that is again to do the study, to do the, to do an analysis, he should try to understand how the system is working, right. So, it he should be well versed, well experienced in the domain. Now, what is the problem with requirement elicitation? Now, sometimes what happens is that these stakeholders, they really do not know what they really want. He could be one of the stakeholders who is going to use the system, yes, but he really does not know what, what the system, what they want. They have a vague idea of how the system should operate, but they cannot put it into words. That is not, they are not clear about the requirement of the system. Then the stakeholders can also express the requirements in their own terms. In the very first session, we talked about a certain case study where which involved medical health records, maintaining medical health records digitally, right. So, the stakeholder of that medical health record could be a patient, could be a doctor, could be a, ho a hospital receptionist who is going to use this patient record, right. All these people are stakeholders, it could be a nurse who is going to use this, who is monitoring the patient, who is going to uh, interact between the patient and the doctor. But when you talk to a nurse, she'll, she might have a vague idea of what kind of data she wants from the patient to pass it on to doctor, but she might not be able to put it into words or she might not be able to express it in the manner that the developer wants. That is one of the problem, okay. Be, and sh what the nurse tells and the, what the doctor tells there could be the difference, there could be a little bit of gap between how they uh, uh, specify a certain requirement for the automated system to be developed, fine. Then different stakeholders may have conflicting requirements. The patient might say that I am going to use this system in this way, the doctor might say I am going to use this system for this way, the requirements itself could be conflicting. Each stakeholder could have a different opinion of the requirement that is required to be, uh, that is required to be specified as a part of the document. Then organizational and political factors may influence these system requirements. This is, this is where uh, the, where we saw the non-functional requirements where other than the process activities, we need to take care of the legal issues that are involved, the process, the political issues, the organizational factors we need to consider while developing a software, the same thing comes into picture here. So, this is also a problem, the your customer might want uh, something that actually does not, uh, actually our uh, organizational ethics or professional uh, practices do not allow us to implement that requirement as a part of software. The requirements can change during the analysis process. To some extent, to some extent you can allow the requirements to change. After a certain extent, if the requirements and uh, elicitation or discovery, if the requirements keep changing, what is specified keep cha keeps changing, it becomes actually very difficult for the developer to redefine the requirement because requirements become the base for your design. The design needs to be changed, the development needs to be changed, etcetera. 
So, how do you actually finalize a certain requirement for a software product is very important and it's a, it is a huge challenge actually. New stakeholders may emerge and the business environment may change. You have a set of people as stakeholders who are involving in the uh, requirements engineering process. During the engineering process, you also realize that oh, it is not just the uh, doctor, the nurse, the patient, the receptionist who is going to use, the medical officer also may use the system. We have a new stakeholder now. Now, what does the medical officer want to do with the system? How does he wants to use for his own purpose is a new requirement. If it is just about generating a report of list of all patients who are interacting from a local system to the server to the remote uh, system through the patient health care management system. If he wants just the report then that is a requirement right. He would need to give him the report. So, when a new stakeholder emerges out of nowhere or uh, during the process of requirement itself then the requirements might change and the process needs to be uh, needs to be uh, again thought over again. Okay. Now, what are the activities that are uh, uh, that are involved in the requirements analysis process? Requirements through discovery are found and I have now have a set of requirements. To do requirements analysis the basic background is that we need to have a set of requirements that is the basic prerequisite for analysis. First thing that I am going to do as a part of requirement analysis is that I am going to classify these requirements and organize them. Why do you need to classify? There could be requirements that are related to each other. So, you need to classify these requirements according to how they are related and organize them into clusters. Now, this classification and organization plays a very important role in deciding what kind of a model that you are you are going to use in order to develop this software. There are certain models wherein you release a prototype in between right. We were talking about the incremental model in the previous sessions wherein you are going to release a prototype. You release a prototype why for the end user to use it and give us feedback right. So, that you start working more on it based on the feedback. Now, when you group related requirements and you actually are going to can actually develop a prototype based on the requirements that you have grouped into clusters right. And how you do this grouping depends on the prioritization. The priority of the requirements right you can give priority if there are 20 or 30 requirements that needs to be satisfied for a uh, medium for a small system. Then you prioritize the requirements based on the priority of the user. Of or the customer who is going to uh, uh, use it and then develop a proto prototype for this prioritized requirement. Based on what input you get for the prioritized requirements, you can then resolve any kind of a conflict that is going to involve, uh, evolve as a part of your uh, uh, redefinition of a same requirement again and again. That is you can resolve requirement conflicts based on the prioritization of the requirement. Okay. Requirements documentation, requirements are documented and input into the into the next round of the spiral. Okay. So, this spiral activity which we saw in one in the in the picture that uh, we started off with, this spiral activity has requirement document as the output. Now, it does not end here, it is important that it does not end here. Now, this uh, system requirement document once released, you can actually based on the inputs from various stakeholders, you can start off the activity all over again with the spiral, with the same spiral okay. and then try to come up with intermediate system requirements document and then finally, based on all the intermediate uh, requirements document you can finally, finalize on one requirements specification. Okay. Next these are the activities of the requirements analysis. Next is the requirements validation. What is validation? We have talked about it. Validation is trying to see if the requirement that is stated is satisfied, is as, is uh, 
as the customer wants is what the customer really wants okay you are going to demonstrate that the requirements define the system that the customer really wants is it satisfying more the requirement of a customer that is requirements validation now why is validation important requirements validation it's a very important process because when it a certain system uh, if you if the customer thinks that his requirements are not satisfied going back to the previous process and developing the whole system from the scratch from the beginning redefining the entire software system is going to cost a lot of money or time in uh, cost a lot in in uh, in order to fix this implementation error so fixing a requirements error after delivery is going to cost up to 100 times the cost of fixing an implementation error based on the application that is being developed so it is very important that we do the validation on requirements that we have received how do we do the requirements validation requirements validation can be done by the process of uh, requirements checking now requirements checking is a set of activities again now what are you going to check you have a set of requirements what is it that you are going to check with the requirements you are going to check these things you are going to check the validity you are going to check the consistency you are going to check the completeness you are going to check whether it is real realistic the realism of the requirement and you are going to verify it now what do you mean by validity of a certain requirement the validity of a certain requirement means that does the system does the system provide the function which is going to support what the customer really wants now customer has set, stated a certain requirement is your is your uh, system function do you have a system function that satisfies this requirement that is the validity of a certain requirement then consistency as i told you there could be four stakeholders each of them stating the same requirement in a different way and conflicting each other's views so this is very important at this stage because if you want to write down a certain functionality of a system as a requirement for the system it should be consistent all the five stakeholders should agree upon a certain functionality of the requirement okay that is maintaining the consistency of the requirement then completeness now what is this completeness are all the functions required by the customer included now requirements specification document is a extensive document okay so this should completely tell what the system is going to be after de delivery okay the so this because it is going to state the working of a system at its delivery end it is very much important to for this document to contain each and every requirement that the customer wants okay so that defines the completeness of the software requirements document now can the requirements be implemented with the technology that is existing with the budget that is being finalized for the software development activity yes or no but then that tells us if the requirement is realistic or not right so as a end user i might want good i might i might want anything right but it is at the developer end it is at the requirements engineer end at the software development team the requirements engineer is a part of software engine uh, software development team so it is at the requirements engineer end that uh, who determines whether a certain requirement is realistic to be carried out or not okay you are going to check it then you verify it verifiability is a very important concept now based on certain test cases you must be able to develop test cases at the requirements engineering end itself as a requirements engineer at the requirements engineering process itself you should be able to develop set, set test cases to check if a certain requirement has is is implemented or is it satisfying the constraints specified by the customer test cases need to be developed 
So, developing a test, test cases as early as the requirements engineering uh, um, process activity is a very good part of what we call the extreme co programming. We call this, um, we, this is a uh, bulk part of the extreme programming activity which is a kind of a programming paradigm which you are going to see in the further courses. Okay. So, verifiability is one of the aspects of requirement checking wherein you check whether you actually verify whether a requirements, requirement can be checked as a part of the uh, test case uh, by making use of a test case. Now, what are the various techniques that we have in order to uh, verify a certain requirement? Okay. We are going to uh, use different validation techniques for telling whether a requirement can be satisfied or not, whether it can be implemented or not, whether test cases can be generated etcetera. So, the first kind of a validation technique is requirements review. So, this is a manual analysis of, a, of the requirement. E one by one the re requirements specified are validated, they are uh, uh, you are going to analyze whether you are uh, whether it is possible to it is uh, possible to uh, incorporate this as a functionality in the system of what the customer wants. Okay. This requirement review need not be done by only one person who is a requirement engineer, he could involve domain experts, other managers etcetera. Next, you can also make use of a technique called as prototyping. This is what we were talking about grouping requirements, prioritizing requirements. When you group requirements and prioritize requirements, you can develop a prototype of a model. You, this prototype of a model is an executable model. Using the executable model, you can check the requirements yourself or give it to the user to check the requirements that whether the certain software that is being developed is satisfying what he wants. Okay. You, that is called as the prototyping. Test case generation is the kind of uh, review wherein we talked about verifiability wherein right? it comes under the verifiability. You can develop test cases for requirements in order to check the testability of a certain existence of a certain requirement uh, process. Okay. So, these are the three validation techniques that can be used. Now, we have talked a lot about uh, requirements, we know the structure, we know the software requirements, uh, uh, um, what should the document contain etcetera. There is one sample uh, soft sample requirements document on the web which can be used uh, for, for your educational purpose only because it is not our document, it is a document that is found on the web freely available of, uh, uh, which is which belongs to global digital mega corp. Okay. And it talks about student information management system. The student information management system needs to be developed and the requirements document for developing the student information management system has been put up in this link as a dot doc. So, you can just go through this link and see how a requirements document can exist. In our next session tomorrow, we are going to see what the requirements document consists, this particular requirements document consists of. Kindly note, this requirements document should be used only for educational purpose for your understanding of how a requirements document can be written. Because we are, everybody need not use the IEEE standard based on the application that they are de developing, they can incorporate certain changes in the requirements document. The organization they can take a call over it. So, this sample requirements document will give you an idea of what a requirements document is and the domain is also very suitable for you to understand because it is student information management system. You as a student, you know what information needs to be managed by a university that you are studying in or the college that you are studying in for the institution. So, you can easily understand this. We will actually go into detail with this document by Global Digital Megacorp in detail in the next session. Thank you.